in a new sermon series, and uh, we're going to explore it for the next couple of Sundays, but our uh, sermon series is entitled, When God Shows Out. When God Shows Out. Somebody say that with me this morning. Say, when God shows out. Amen. Uh, our scripture that we're going to be just walking through is the book of 1 Kings, just the whole chapter 18. We're just going to walk our way through chapter 18. If you're not familiar with it, you need to just read that chapter this week because God shows up and God shows out big time in 1 Kings chapter 18. I mean, in this chapter, God ends a drought that has lasted for three years with life-giving rain and a mighty downpour. In this chapter, God delivers Israel from false prophets who have been ruling over them and poisoning the people. In this chapter, God answers by fire. I mean, He shows up and He shows out in this one chapter of the book of Kings. And so, we're going to explore that. And in particular, what I would like to explore is the fact that there are certain conditions. There are usually certain things in place in people's lives. There, there's a certain atmosphere at work and the circumstances and the ground usually has been prepared a certain way. Before God shows up and God shows out. We're going to look at that this morning. And, and I want you to think that maybe, just maybe, you might have the perfect circumstances going on in your life for God to be able to show out. Maybe you're in the right position. Maybe you're at the right time. Maybe you have the right circumstances for God to sovereignly show up and move in your life today. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Wouldn't that be wonderful? Amen. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And so our new sermon series is When God Shows Out. But I don't want some of you to disqualify yourself this morning. Because some of you already have. You, you began to disqualify yourself from a sovereign move of God because when God shows out, it's not really what you think. It's not really what you think. And, and that is my sermon this morning. The series is When God Shows Out. But this morning, the title of my message is, Is Not Like You Think. Tell, tell your neighbor this morning, say, It's Not Like You Think. It's not. It's not like you think. Let's pray today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we know your word is greatly anointed. And Lord, we just ask that you add the anointing to our ears and to our heart, Lord, to be able to hear what your word has to say to us. Lord, we thank you for the Holy Ghost speaking in hearts and lives this morning. And we praise you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And if someone wouldn't mind, I'd like a, a bottle of water this morning. I'm, I'm running dry today. And so, for this series, we're going to be walking through 1 Kings chapter 18. Again, I recommend that you read the whole chapter in your study time. Uh, thank you so much. But let's begin with verse 1. Verse 1 says... And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Abraham, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. A sore famine in Samaria. I want you to know that there are certain things that happen when God is ready to show out. Right. The first thing that you need to know this morning is that God always begins by finding a man or a woman who is willing to follow His directions. Right. Amen. <clears throat> when God decides to show out, He starts by finding somebody 
who will obey no matter how crazy it makes them look to other folk. Amen. He, he always finds somebody who's willing to follow some directions. He finds somebody like Noah who's willing to build a boat on dry land when there's no water anywhere nearby. He finds somebody like Moses who will stretch a stick out over the water just because God said so and, and, and just waiting to see what happens. He finds somebody who's willing to to do what he said even if it might make them look crazy to other people. Amen. Somebody like Elijah. Yeah. Somebody like Elijah. He starts by finding people who will do things that everybody else is afraid to do. Yeah. He starts with folk who are willing to take risks. Folk who are willing to do what other people say cannot be done. Willing to do the stuff that can make you look crazy if it don't work. Have you ever done anything that you just knew it wasn't going to work and you were going to look crazy? You just knew if I do this and it don't work, I am going to look so crazy. Huh? You ever been there and done that? I mean, you, you're a good candidate for God to show up and to show out in your life. Willing to take chances because you believe that God is big enough to handle the things that you know yes. you can't do on your own. Amen. You know, it, it takes special folk willing to go against the flow of popular culture and against the wisdom of everybody around them. And it takes somebody special and unique to go against the way mama and daddy always did it. And grandma said it was like this. It takes somebody special to be able to stand up against the environment that surrounds them and say, I'm going to do something different because God said for me to do something different. I may look crazy to you, but I'm going to be lined up with God and I'm willing to take the chance and believe that if I do it God's way, everything's still going to be all right. Can I get an amen anywhere in the house today? You know, folk willing to start a ministry on an avenue that other folk are running to get away from. Sound like some special kind of people to me. I, I'm talking about people who are willing to go against the norms. People who are willing to go to college in their 30s when everybody else is just settling down to take what they get and ride out the rest of life and saying it, it won't get no better. I, I'm talking about people unreasonable enough to keep going when everybody else is quitting and everybody else is throwing in the towel and turning around. See, God shows up. And God shows out when He has people like that to work with. People who will get counseling for their marriage when everybody's saying, leave that fool and start over. People who will get off drugs when other people say, you'll never be able to quit. But they say, I know there's hope and I know I'll take that step. I know I can make it. People who will continue to care and continue to love family members that everybody else has given up on, everybody else has quit on, and everybody else says there's no hope for them. That's the kind of people that God can show up and show out for. Amen? Amen. And I just believe this morning, somehow I, I kind of get the idea that perhaps, I don't know Bishop, maybe I'm wrong, but I kind of get the idea that Christ Church might just have... Uh -oh. More than its fair share of hard-headed, unreasonable people who'd be willing to do what God said, even if it makes them look crazy. Even if other folk are going, why are you going to Second Avenue to church? Don't you know black folk go to church on Second Avenue? Why are you going to church on Second? Why are you listening to white folk preach? You know white folk can't preach and they sure can't sing. What are you doing going to church way over there on Second Avenue with them folk? I believe there's just some folk around here who are just unreasonable enough to be able to do something different than what everybody around them said. Give God some praise if you think I might be on to something there. Hard-headed people who have gotten a hold of a faith that has gotten a hold of them and has given them the power to change their life and change the direction 
direction of their family and their future. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody this morning, say, when God shows up, it is not like you think. God had told Elijah to appear before Ahab and to tell him that it would not rain anymore until he said so. Whew, you talk about the potential to look like a fool. I mean, the potential not just to look like a fool, the potential to get you killed. What are you talking about, huh? So Elijah stood before the king, and you've got to see the picture because he stood tall. And he stood straight and he stood before the king and he said, God said, it will not rain anymore until I say so. I wonder if it was cloudy that day. He stood in front of a king. A king. He stood tall. And some people are afraid to stand in front of their own family. Wow. Right. Some folk are afraid to stand in front of their own family and say, I will not live like this anymore. Because it goes against what God said. I will not sell out. I will not hustle. I will not lie. I will not live like this anymore because God said something different. He stood in front of a king and some folk are afraid to stand in front of their friends and, and say God said that I can't sleep around and it's more important for me to be right with him than to be right with y'all and so I'm going to keep myself right. I'm going to respect myself. I'm going to love myself. I'm going to take care of me and I'm going to wait on the Lord. Amen. I, I know it's old school to y'all, but I heard my grandmother say, those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They, they'll mount up with eagle's wings and they'll run and not get weary. Those that wait on God have some good things coming to them. And I can't wallow with you and fly with Him. So we're going to have to split some things out here. And, and I got to be different because God said so. Amen. Somebody needs to find some courage today. Somebody needs to find some gumption today. Somebody needs to get a hold of a little bit of old school this morning. So that you can come begin to have victory in your life instead of more of the same. Amen. You need to know that God shows out. When he can find a man or woman who will obey regardless of how crazy it looks. Amen. Because y'all know we're afraid of looking crazy. <laughs> can I get a witness in the house anyway? Uh-huh. And the second condition that's usually right for God to show out is when there's a sore famine, is what the scripture said. There's a sore famine. In Samaria, sore famine. In other words, God shows out when people are hungry. God shows out when people are hungry. I, I, I don't know about you, but I feel myself just getting a little bit hungry this morning. I, I want to know, are there any hungry people in here? Or is there anybody hungry for a move of God in your life? Is there anybody hungry for a move of God in the church? Is there anybody? Anybody? hungry in the house today. In this chapter, God answers by fire. He delivers Israel from false prophets. He ends a three-year drought with a life-saving downpour. And my question for you this morning, is there anybody in here hungry for an answer? Yes. Is there anybody hungry? It, I mean, is there any real people that go to church here? I mean, is there anybody hungry and in need of God to show up and end a drought in your life this morning? You've been going through the motions, but it's as dry as last year's bird nest, and you're just a little bit hungry for God to show up and end the drought. Is there anybody a little bit hungry for more 
than what you've been feasting on lately. Amen. Tell somebody, when God shows up, it's not like you think. See, you need to, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to stand up and declare what God has said in your personal life. Don't, don't be afraid to declare the salvation of Jesus Christ to your family and invite somebody to church. Don't be afraid to tell somebody of the hope that is in you and why you don't act like you used to act and why you don't talk like you used to talk. I mean, the redeemed of the Lord ought to say so is what the Bible says. Amen? And I know what some of you are thinking. I know I know why. You're thinking of all the hell that would break loose uh -oh. in your life if you began speaking out loud the things that God has declared right. to the folk that you have surrounded yourself with. Yeah. You're, you're a lot like Obadiah. Elijah meets Obadiah in verse 7. Uh, God said in verse 1, Go show yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly, for it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land, unto all the fountains and all the brooks, and peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and the mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. We'll talk about the beasts later. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. And Ahab went one way by himself and Obadiah another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him and he knew him. And he fell on his face and he said, Art thou my Lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go tell your Lord, behold, Elijah is here. Now, I want you to note very carefully the response of Obadiah. And he said, What have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to say it, slay me? God's getting ready to show out and Obadiah's response is, You're going to get me killed. What are you talking about? Tell your neighbor, say, It's not like you think. You're trying to set me up for something bad, is what Obadiah was thinking here. And so when God gets ready to show out, it's not like you think because you think he's just going to show up and show out on his own and no man is going to do anything and God's just going to magically, mysteriously make things better and nobody's going to have to take a risk and nobody's going to have to take a chance and nobody's going to have to do anything. But tell your neighbor, it's not like you think. It's not like you think. Amen. Obadiah talks just like good church folk. Oh, yeah. Have, have I got time? With, can we go a little bit deeper here? Is that all right with you got? When, when, when God gets ready to show out, He's not just going to show up and show out on His own with no man to point the way and with no risk or no personal investment on your part. And, and it just don't happen that way. When God is about to show out, it's not like you think it is because there's always risk involved. In moving to another level. There's always risk involved in moving to another level. It, it takes a change in your mindset. It, it takes a change in your way of thinking. It, it takes a change in the strategy that you've been using to deal with things to move to a higher level and change always. Tell you never say always. always. 
has some risk involved in it. And this is why so many insecure people never move up and start operating on the higher level that God has called them to. Because they're too afraid of change. And so I want you to just think about it for a moment. Is your insecurities holding you back? Is your insecurities keeping you from embracing change? Because let me tell you, the only state that does not continue to have change is the state of death. I mean, when something starts change, stops change, it's because it's dead. When, when change is over, it's because life is over. Amen? And, and, and so many people are trying to imitate and mimic the status of death in their own lives. And they're wondering why they don't have the abundant life that Christ is calling them up to. It's because they're shackled by their insecurities. And they're trying to be real still so maybe nobody will notice it. Maybe the enemy will leave me alone and I can just make my paycheck and come home. And maybe I can just have all the hell of life pass me by if I'm still and quiet enough. But I've got news for you this morning. It don't work that way. The, the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust alike. It don't matter if you're standing still or not. You're still going to get wet. The wave's still coming. The storm still pass by. And so somebody needs to cut loose today from the shackles that have been holding you back. You need to rise up and embrace the changes that God would ordain in your life so you can move yes. to another level. Yes. You need the new friends God's been trying to set you up with all these months. You need the new folk to hang around that you're too afraid to go out and have dinner with. You need to change the folk you deal with on a daily basis because you got to change your mind and, and if you're always hearing the same thing, you're always going to think the same way. And until you can change your mind, you'll never Tell somebody, say never. never. You'll never change your life Amen. until you can change your mind. Amen. If there's a witness in the house, somebody say amen. 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 You want to be real in here today. Amen. amen. And so Obadiah was a man who greatly feared the Lord. Verse 3 tells us so. Verse 3 tells us so. And he's in a position of great influence. But he's working for some really bad people. Can I, can I get a witness in the house? Anyway, I, he greatly feared that. You need to learn something from this this morning. It is possible to accomplish great things working for and with really bad people. You, you need to catch a hold of something. Me and Bishop have been talking about it for years. You need to get a hold of a kingdom assignment this morning. You didn't just show up where you're at by accident one day. Amen. God knows where you are. He knows who you're working with and who you're working for. And so maybe God has you working with a bunch of devils for a very specific reason this morning. Amen. Go ahead and give a witness in the house if you know what I'm talking about. Perhaps your position is really an undercover assignment for you to be able to bless the kingdom of God, for you to be able to save some of the prophets and keep the word alive in the land. Maybe it's an undercover assignment for you to be able to speak into the life of a young man or a young woman who is there and caught up in that mess and constantly getting their feelings hurt with all the garbage that's going on in the office. Maybe... Maybe God has placed you where you're at to save a life. Save a life. Tell somebody, say, save a life. Amen. Amen. And so Obadiah was the governor over Ahab's household. That means he was the chief steward. He was the manager in the king's house. He was over all the other servants. He would have made sure there was food and wine. He would have made sure... That the household ran properly. Position of great influence, but working for a devil. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, 
The only devil bigger than Ahab was the one he was married to. Right? And she was the one telling him what to do most of the time. When he was pouting, she was giving instructions, right? And so he's working for Ahab and Jezebel. Don't be complaining about your job no more. Amen. Amen. And so he's working for Ahab and Jezebel, and he uses his position in order to save a hundred of the prophets of the Lord alive when Jezebel's having them slaughtered everywhere. He's got them saved and hid, and he's even feeding them while they're in hiding in a secret place. And so I want you to see Brother Obadiah. I mean, this wasn't no, 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 no slack pew sitter here. I mean, Obadiah was good church folk. I mean, he was good church folk, right? And so he has done great things. I'm talking to some people that's done some great things. He has put himself at personal risk. He has put himself out for the kingdom of God. He has put himself out in order to save the prophets. He took a great risk in doing that. But the strain and the stress of the risk he has taken and the stress of his position day in and day out has brought him to the place where he just don't feel like he can handle anything else. Y'all might as well come go to church with me and get real and say amen in the house today. Anybody in the house ever done some great things? I mean, you're, you're, not, you're not running behind. I mean, you're, you're up in the vanguard. You're, you're charging with the Lord. But the stress and the strain of where you're at and the, the risk you've taken and the service you've given has you to the point where you feel like you just can't handle anything else right now. Amen. Go ahead and give God a witness if you know what I'm talking about now. We don't want to get too down on Brother Obadiah this morning. Is there anybody who's dared much, risked much, but you're just on edge now? And, and you're almost at a quitting place now. Well, you, 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 if, if, if they try to get me to go one step further, I'm going to give up, I'm going to quit, I'm going to say, you're trying to get me killed. I, I, I can't do what, what you're calling me to do, God. You're trying to kill me. I just can't handle any more than what I've got. You're ready to just keep looking after the donkeys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going down this road. I'm just going down this road. I'm just I'm trying to find grass for the donkeys. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> Don't mess with me. I, no, Lord. Uh -uh. I'm just finding grass for donkeys. That's all I'm doing. Don't add nothing to my job description. Don't try to change nothing, Lord. I, no, I, grass for donkeys. That's all I'm after today. Don't start nothing in the altar, Holy Ghost. I'm just grass for donkeys today. Don't do one of those powerful altar calls and get me up there crying and snotting and squatting. Mm. No, no. Just grass for donkeys today. That's that's all I'm here for. I'm just going down this road. <laughs> you need to know that when you have come to the place that you've risked much and you've loved much and you've done much but you feel like you can't handle anything else and yet there's still so many hungry people everywhere you look. You need to know that God has brought you to the place that if you can press in and go just a little bit further, all the conditions are right for God to show out. Amen? Give God.
God some praise one more time. Tell somebody, God's ready to show out. But it's not like you think. But it's not like you think. Amen. It's not like you think. Preach, I love God. I love church and all. And, and But if I start telling people about God and what God is doing in my life, there is the possibility of rejection and much worse. If I start being a witness at my job, I might lose my job. I mean, there is risk involved for me to start talking about what God is doing on 2nd Avenue and in my life. Yeah, I know I'm the manager of the house. I mean, I understand that I get things for people that don't come to church. I know I'm serving and I'm getting things for people and I manage the house. I'm paying stuff for folk who don't come to church. But you don't know the risk involved with me trying to get them to come to church. Lord, I'm not even sure if church can handle these folk. If I get them to come to church and they act like a fool up in the house of God, how's that going to make me look after I finally got them through the door? There's a lot of folk living a lot like Obadiah this morning. When you're running at the edge of your capacity and small things start to feel like big risks, then you were in a great place for God to show up and show out. Amen. 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 You, you can start inviting people to church from work. And it might cost you something. Yes, right. But it might cause God to show up and show out on the scene and answer by fire and fix those things you've been struggling with for years. Amen. Amen. It might cost you something to be a witness for Christ in your home and in your marriage. It might cost you something, but it might give you the marriage that you thought you were getting from the very beginning if you would get them into the presence of God. Amen. And get some things where God is ending the drought and He's sending the rain and life is coming to things all over again. Amen. How much would it be worth to see the famine Ended in your family. Amen. What would it be worth to see a three year drought in certain areas of your life come to an end? What would it be worth to see God answer by fire one more time and prove that there is no God but Jehovah one more time in your life? Amen. What would it be worth? Is there anybody? that needs something from God this morning. Amen. Is there anybody? You can close your eyes this morning and, and bow your head.